Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. I have not updated in a few weeks, mainly because I was sick, I had a cold, and I had an ear infection, and it was a pain. But while I was sick, I received my consumer HTC Vive, which is on my head right now. I have set up the lighthouses in my room, so if you haven't, I haven't told you about my room configuration. I have a loft bed over my desk, that's right in front of me, above the camera. And I have a bookshelf over there where I have set up one of my lighthouse space stations on the shelf. And back there in the corner, you can see I have a tripod by my door, which has my other lighthouse station. Now, because these are both positioned pretty low, it's easy for me to block one lighthouse from seeing the other lighthouse. So to deal with that, I have um, attached a sink cable from one lighthouse base station to the other and set one of them to A and one of them to B. And that's going to eliminate any, uh, any sinking issues I would have with optical sink. Anyway, so today, this is my first room scale video, and I'm going to kick it off with the official Steam VR tutorial, which introduced the Steam VR and the chaperone features and the controllers and room scale. So let's go ahead and start it up. All right, here I am in the Steam VR tutorial. Um, by the way, I'm recording this entire episode on the built-in Vive microphone, so you can get an idea of the quality. I did post-process the audio a little bit. Um, so we're inside this giant empty room and there's a little apartment here and there's a little couch and a little bedroom and, and a monitor that seems, or TV that seems to have been destroyed somehow. And here in the lamppost, oh, there goes our computer, is our friend. So first it's going to clean up the apartment. They are, um... Rather haphazard about cleaning this up. There's our refrigerator. And we're inside a giant empty box. No! Oh! Oh! Uh, oh! You're here! Hello there. Welcome to virtual reality, or VR. I am the Virtual Reality Assistance and Education Corps. I shall be your guide for the next few minutes to show you how everything works. Let's get started. Have a look around you. The orange border in which you're standing is called the play area. The boundaries of your play area were defined during setup, and VR experiences will take place within them. Now, I'd like to introduce you to your chaperone bounds. Walk toward me, uh, slowly, please, and stop when you see a colored fence appear in the air in front of you. So a lot of people who have played Portal 2 say this guy is like based on Wesley, but I think he's, um, I think he's more just kind of one of the random, random cores that was produced by Aperture. And this is the Virtual Reality Education Core, an Assistance in Education Core. Um, in my room, I've configured a play area of about 2 meters by 2.6 meters. Uh, that is about all my bedroom can handle, in addition to my loft bed and desk and bookcases and all that stuff. But it's still a reasonable Good. little area to walk about in. These are your chaperone bounds. They will appear whenever you approach the edge of your physical space to help you avoid bumping into objects in the real world. So Let's do it one more here. time. I'll just move over to the other side. I start to lose tracking if I get a bit too close to the wall because the lighthouse can't see me too well. Now, walk slowly toward me on this side. Great. I think you've got the hang of it. Lastly, take a small step back, just until the chaperone bounds disappear. My bookcase is over here, and over there is my closet. So these are the boundaries of my Perfect. Space. Now, have a look at the controllers you're holding. Go ahead, move them around. Wave them in front of your face. They are accurately tracked to your movements. Let's go through each of the controller buttons. On the underside of the controller is a trigger button. Give that a squeeze. Ooh. Oh my! 
Oh, that is quite dangerous. Let's just turn that off for the moment. Oh. Next, they find the away. grip buttons located on either side of the controller. Uh, press one of them. That is so cool how they can temporarily see through the controller and see all the stuff. Anyway, grip buttons. Whoa! Ah! <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Uh, the large circle on the controller is the trackpad. It should be beneath your thumb. Slide your thumb around the trackpad. Notice that it shows you where you are touching the pad. The trackpad is also a button. Press in on the trackpad now. Oh, I wonder where that was hiding. Different VR experiences can use the trackpad in a number of ways. For example, let's turn it into four buttons instead of one. There. Now, press one. So the red button is not doing anything right up. Oh, hmm. <laughs> uh, try another. Green. Uh, one more, please. And blue. Well, oh, this is turning into quite a party. Next, look at your controller and find the menu button. As you may be able to guess, many VR experiences will use this button to call up a menu. Press it now. Ooh. Oh, some nice variety there. Why not try one? So when I hit menu, it rotates between regular balloons and dog well balloons. Well chosen. Now, find and press the system button which will summon the Steam VR dashboard. Here it is, the Steam VR dashboard. Note that most VR experiences will pause while the dashboard is on screen. You can use the trigger to select items on the dashboard, and the dashboard can be closed by pressing the system button again. Go ahead and close the dashboard. So this is some of the stuff I have installed in my Steam VR so far. I'm definitely going to do videos on a lot of these and even more. This is just getting started. Well, I believe that's everything you need to know. You're free to stay here and play with the controllers for as long as you like. Whenever you're finished, open the dashboard and start exploring. While you do that, I should be practicing my latest lecture. The unabridged history of accountancy filing methods. Oops. I just need to fetch my notes. I just hit uh -oh. my bed. My battery is dead. I think um, my chaperone boundaries are slightly too far away on this side. I will have to reconfigure. And they're gone. So now I just have this space to myself. I can hang out here. I can make more balloons. I can play with balloons. I really like the balloon feature in this demo because in real life, balloons are very light. And so if you like hit them with a stick, you don't really feel the balloon's weight. And so it kind of feels natural that the same happens here and you can't really feel it. So it helps compensate for the lack of haptics. Betty is great just because you can put it over your head. You can get that stereoscopic field sense at a variety of depths. Uh, the laser is just fun because it's a laser. And the laser actually also is um, kind of like the laser pointer. So in SteamVR, you manipulate everything using a laser pointer. And laser pointers are a really natural way to adapt existing kind of gaze-based or 2D UIs into a VR space. You just point with your laser pointer where you want to go and it's very precise. And you can use it on a very large surface without having to be close up to the surface like you would if you were manipulating it with your fingers. And since we don't have finger tracking anyway, it's actually, um, it lets you use the course with hand tracking to do fine manipulation of an interface. So I, the laser pointer is actually a very versatile 
means of means of interaction in this hand track based system. Let's see. So I can flip this around. It's it's really interesting to me to like be holding a real controller that looks exactly the same size and shape as this one. But then this one can do cool things like in fantastic contraption. They have the controller skinned with a different a different graphical appearance. In this one they can make this part flip and it obviously does not do that in real life. Dog balloons. Give me my dog balloon. Ah. It's hard to hold on to the dog balloons. Ah. And I need to adjust my chaperone boundaries. That one is a little bit too far away. I need to remember that. This one is fine over here on my blind. So I do not have the largest space around, but I have a reasonably large space. It is enough to get by. And apparently I'm getting Steam notifications that my Steam friends are playing various VR games. If you have an HTC Vive or you just want to add me, I am on Steam at Everyday VR. And you can see what VR games I am playing at any time. You can send me messages. I will have to remember to turn on Do Not Disturb when I am playing videos. But that was a good reminder. And this is all for today. Um, so I'm obviously going to do more room scale videos. I'm going to play all those games I showed you. Let me know which one of these you would like to see me play next. I would definitely love to do more Fantastic Contraption. I'd love to do some Tilt Brush, some Job Simulator. I've played all of those before. They're really great experiences. I've done some virtual desktop. It works great on the Vive. It's not a room scale experience really, but it is still very, um, it, it lets me operate my computer and do anything I would normally do just in, in room scale VR. Which is exciting. Uh, Jonta is my own application that I worked on and I'll show you a little bit of this later. I actually did the Vive port of this app and this lets you watch 360 degree videos. Let me um, reset the seated position here. There we go. So uh, Jonta is for watching three, 360 degree videos. So for example, if I go into film here, this is the one I like to show always because it's a good demonstration technically is the Zoolander piece. So I, I stole kind of SteamVR's laser pointer idea uh, for manipulating things. It's very easy. And now I'm inside a 360 degree video. This is all stereoscopic. It's all at 4K resolution. So it's quite high quality. It's live action content. So I'll get back to this later in a more detailed video. But for now, this has been the introduction to SteamVR. I will see you guys next time. And everybody have a great every day.